There are only a few things more frightening than being on fire at sea. If you've never experienced this, or you don't have a plan of attack, you're going to want to watch this video. Welcome to Boat Training Online. I'm Sean Pollard and today we're going to talk about fire. We're going to talk about how it's made and how to extinguish it. We're going to talk about equipment and having that equipment in place prior to you having a fire and thinking about what you're going to do to get this fire out. You're going to really, really want to know, have this wired tight because you only have seconds to act before everything is out of control. All right, so let's get into it. Let's talk about what a fire is. What, what creates a fire? What are the elements of a fire? And we're gonna start off with the fire triangle. And to have a fire, you have to have fuel, something to burn. Then we're gonna need heat. And a fire also needs oxygen. <clears throat> this triangle was turned into a tetrahedron, which is just the bottom. So we've got one more element to this. And it's called chemical chain reaction. Now, what, what is that? I mean, th this always confuses people. So let's go with our, can um, our candle. So we have a candle here. And you have a wick. And there's a space in between the candle wick and the actual flame. And that's where the chemical chain reaction is going on. It's a space right in here. <laughs> if you look at your fire pit or in any fire, if you look at it long enough, you'll see that the flames are not actually on the burning object. It looks like it's off. And it's that chemical chain reaction that's going on in there that's turning the fuel into a flame. If you break that, which is what extinguishing agents are trying to do, you'll put the fire out. If you eliminate any side of a triangle or the tetrahedron, the fire will go out. And a lot of extinguishing agents try to do two. They either try and cool it, bring down the heat, and smother it, cut off the oxygen. So <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to get into that. But I thought that, you know, if you don't know what a fire is, if you don't know these things, I think that this goes a long way into explaining what an actual fire is, is doing here. So let's talk about the different types of fire that you're going to encounter or you could encounter on your boat. The first one is an alpha. And actually it's just A, but military stuff, you know, I've always called them alpha. And these leave leave an ash. We've just watched Hawaii burn up and if you see the footage you'll see a lot of ash. Uh, a majority of that fire was an alpha fire. Uh, it's usually, it used to be indicative of having white smoke but things have progressed. We have different types of clothing material. Let's, let's talk about what's going to burn on a boat. You, if you have wood, alpha fire, um, any of your cloth, any of that stuff that's going to leave an ash. But we've gotten into things like um, nylon. And uh, by the way, this is uh, Gale Force Twins. They have a YouTube channel down in Key West, Florida. A couple young ladies down there putting out some really, really good videos. If you haven't checked them out, I highly recommend. I really enjoy their channel. Uh, but let's go back to fire. This is a nylon shirt. It's going to melt and then it's going to turn into uh, ash. 
The problem here, and I'm going to hit this pretty hard, is that this will leave a really black smoke. And if you inhale this smoke, it's going to, if you live, it's going to create damage that you're going to have for the rest of your life. Now, we're talking, this is a family channel. We're talking about your kids and, and, and your spouse. You want to make sure that if things are getting really, really bad and there's a lot of black smoke, get them off the boat. The, the, the smoke is almost more dangerous than the flames. You do not want your family breathing in this black smoke. All right, next is a Bravo fire. B. And this is your uh, combustible liquids. And what I really want to hit here is the fumes. Any of you guys that have inboard gasoline engines, uh, you, you, you know about the blower system. If you don't, I watched, uh, <laughs> I was just working on our boat one day and I hear this bah, boom and I look over and I see two people flying off this boat into the water. Their engine hatch is about 40 foot in the air and this black, I mean this uh, big fireball is chasing it. And what had happened was they didn't ventilate before they started the engine. And uh, it's a B move. All these fumes will gather down in the bilge area and there's sparks that happen in your boat that you don't really even know about, but fumes do. And you really, really have to be conscious. If you have gasoline or your gas on a boat, can be a bomb. So you really, really want to pay attention to that. <clears throat> Next is um, your Charlie fire. And these are electrical. The thing about a Charlie fire is if you secure the power, it becomes an alpha fire. And that's really really what you want to get to here is a um, you don't want to fight there there's some extinguishing agents if you squirt on electricity it's going to electrocute you and you, you you don't want to do that so if you can and it's kind of been a sore subject with me over the years I've been on boats where the emergency shutoff for the uh, electrical is is in an area that I think is where the fire is actually going to be taking place. Uh, sometimes I've won, they've moved, moved, and most of the time I've lost. But you need to know where it's at and you need to, to act accordingly. If you think that the uh, electrical is going to be an issue, you need to be able to secure that, that electrical. Okay, and then the last is your delta. Is this going on the screen? Delta, and that's uh, metals, combustible metals. Um, you're not going to worry about that. By the time any metal catches on fire on your boat, you're going to have bigger problems than that. Uh, but it's, it, it is a type of fire. I wanted to bring it up. We used to worry about it with uh, helicopters. The helicopter's uh, landing gear is made out of magnesium and uh, magnesium definitely catches on fire. Uh, campers take them into the woods. They have rods and they uh, shave them off and they start their campfires with them. I think they, they uh, ignite it about 900 degrees. So there, there is a metal that will catch on fire, but again, you're not really gonna have to worry about it. So, so these are the different fires. Now, each one of these things are on your boat. And each one of these things can give you a problem, you know, bar barring the metal. And you want to know how to how to activate or how to work these. Now, let's talk about your extinguishers. Your when you go to buy an extinguisher, it'll have what type of fire your extinguisher will put out. Will it put out an A, B, C, or just a C? So ideally you want to put one out that will put out A, B, and C. The downside to this is that it's usually dry chemical and if you have a lot of electronics 
that dry chemical is corrosive and you might ruin your electronics. They have CO2 extinguishers, which cool, they're very cold. They, uh, they put out a gas and they smother the fire. They take out the oxygen on our triangle uh, and they don't damage the electronics. But if we keep things simple, we're talking about your family, we're talking about being at sea, and we're talking about keeping this doable for you, um, I recommend just getting your A, B, and C extinguishers. Okay, so let's, let's go into this a little bit. Some of you guys are gonna have bigger boats and you're gonna have fixed systems. The great thing about being alive today is that cameras are really cheap and a lot of these engine rooms have cameras in them and uh, you just look at your your monitor and you see that you've got smoke in your engine room or you see flames you uh, you need to know how to do this before it happens but you're going to want to follow your procedures for lighting off your fixed system fixed systems are i think now your halon um, some of the other stuff has been proven to be cancer causing and i think that they're taking that stuff off of the uh off of the market but um yeah fixed system great but most of us poor slobs are gonna um be left to do a fire extinguisher so we're going to talk about pass it's an acronym The, the great thing about this little acronym is you can take your 10 year old son or daughter and, and show them this and it makes sense. They, they, they can understand. What happens when you have a fire is you're going to feel stress like you've never felt before. You know that you have to act really fast. Um, and you'll be surprised that the, the young ones, they can, they can handle it. You just got to do training with them. So pass, pull the pin. Oops, pull the pin. On a fire extinguisher, you got a pin on the side. It's usually got a little wire tie or a, a nylon tie. Just pull it out because you can't get the extinguishing agent out until you, you squeeze. All right, then you want to aim. Let's go back to our candle. All right, we have a fire here that we want to put out. You want to aim at the base. You, you want your agent to go at the base of the fire. If you shoot over here, all your agent is going to end up not near the fire and you don't want that. So always aim at the base or a little before the base and bounce it into the, into the flame. Then you're going to want to squeeze squeeze the handle and then sweep so pull the pin aim it some of them have little nozzles on them some just have aim we want to aim properly you can discuss this with your your family and then sweep if the fire goes out reposition yourself go from a different angle and squeeze now, now let, let's hit my pet peeve here. The Coast Guard and the state or whoever you are gonna answer to have carriage requirements. And the carriage requirement is that you're required to have a fire extinguisher on board. And they do that because they are vitally important if you have a fire. But, you don't want to just pass a test. You're, you're doing this because your family's on this boat and you want to be able to put the fire out. There is nothing, nothing worse than to be extinguishing the fire and get to the, get to the end of your agent and the fire's not out. And you don't have any more extinguishers. Well, you passed the Coast Guard's test, but you have failed because you didn't put the fire out and you don't have anything else left behind. So make sure that you, you have enough agent 
in different locations. And, and let me just, while we're on the subject here, a lot of the stuff that we talk about in these videos are transferable to your house. I live in New England and uh, I heat my house with a boiler. And a boiler, it's got a great big tank of diesel right next to it. So that's a hot spot for a possible fire. Plus I have an electrical panel and I have a dryer right next to it. Another hot spot. I station fire extinguishers on my way to each one of those places. I have a two car garage that hose, houses cars with gasoline and oil and everything, everything that we've talked about here. And I have extinguishers to get to those places. And I hope that, you, you know, maybe in these discussions about boats, that you transfer some of this stuff to home and make sure that you can get a fire out if you have, fires are just absolutely devastating to your family. And, uh, and this is good stuff. I mean, you, you can get these out. I want you to get it in your head that this black smoke is as dangerous or more dangerous than actually getting burnt. And you don't want your family anywhere near that black smoke. Get them upwind of it or get them in the water. The next two videos I'm gonna do, I still have to do one about taking on water, but the last one is gonna be about abandoned ship. And when I say abandoned ship, I'm not talking about a ship, I'm talking about your boat. If you have an 18 foot center console, you're leaving your boat, you're abandoning ship. And there's, there's things that you wanna do, and, and I'll cover all those in the video. But this fire stuff, you know, you're in a mayday situation, so you're gonna really, really wanna kinda of tie our video about Maydays and with this, you're, you're not going to want to dilly dally. I will say this too, if your fire is out, you're no longer in imminent danger. So you're not in a Mayday situation, but you're definitely going to need assistance. So I hope that you have um, arranged with one of these uh, salvage companies to come help you. Um, but this fire stuff is, uh, it doesn't happen often. Uh, usually we have one or two cases a year and you spread that across the United States so it does happen it behooves you to take the time to figure this stuff out the placement of your extinguishers talking with your family about pass doing all this stuff uh, it, it really it's worth your time and effort because you just never know all right man I love you guys we're doing great on the channel uh, we're just about to go over 4,000 watch hours, which means YouTube might start sending me a check, which my wife will really enjoy. <laughs> All right, man, I love you, and I'll catch you on the next one. We're going to do uh, Taking on Water and Abandoned Ship. I'll catch you around. Thank you.